Now, of course, one of the most important uh, things with an ebook reader is how much does it weigh? So let's check it out. New fourth generation touch, 210 grams. I'm very surprised. It, they haven't shaved much at all compared to the third generation Kindle. This is the Wi-Fi version. They've only shaved 10 grams off it. And if we compare that to the 3G version of the third generation Kindle, it's an extra 12 grams for that. Uh, so presumably the uh, 3G version of the Touch will be a uh, 12 grams on top of that, putting it basically on par with the third generation. I'm pretty disappointed in that actually. Uh, and if you compare it to the uh, uh, non-touch version, fourth generation, is a quite a compelling uh, weight saving there, apart from the size as well. So I can see some compelling reasons still to get. Now, well, size and weight are the main reasons why you'll get the non-touch uh, version. So uh, that makes sense why they're actually um, selling that. You know, if you're backpacking around the world or you're doing ultra lightweight backpacking, you want to go read out in the bush or something, you want to want to take this puppy instead of the touch version to save a few grams. But let's compare that to uh, a typical uh, paperback book. I've got a uh, moonshot here, excellent read by the way. And there you go, 260. So the Kindle, even though it's, uh, you know, it's it still weighs a lot less than a typical uh, quite uh, light, small, you know, medium size uh, paperback book. Let's have another excellent book here, 218 grams. So there you go, it still weighs less than, um, you know, a typical size book, which is fantastic. And this can hold thousands. And if we have a look at the uh, size comparison here, compared to the uh, non-touch uh, fourth generation version, we've got the touch one, which we're reviewing here, fourth generation, and the third generation Kindle here. It, uh, is, uh, it is actually bigger than the, as you'd expect, because it's got uh, the touch screen and uh, I believe a bigger uh, battery in there. So it is... Uh, now, uh, a slightly bit uh, bigger than the uh, non-touch uh, version, and of course there's a big difference between the third and the fourth generation version right there. That is quite, quite substantial difference. And you can see that the touch version here is a little bit uh, thicker than the non-touch version. And how thick is it? Well, it's just over, just on 10 millimeters, basically. Compare that with the non-touch version, and... We're talking, uh, yeah, about one and a half millimeters thicker. Maybe two, there you go. And for reference, it is thicker than the third generation Kindle. Compared to the non-touch uh, version, it's uh, very similar. It's got the nice black beveled edge around the screen. I really like that. Oops, it's touch, I shouldn't touch it. Uh, and uh, it's what they've, uh, the big thing of course, is that they've done away with, with your traditional uh, Kindle page turning buttons on the side. There are no page turning buttons on the side because it's all touch now. You uh, swipe and you gesture and you tap to turn pages. And the other major difference of course is that uh, what looks like a um, some sort of little speaker vent uh, or microphone <laughs> vent down the bottom is actually the home button and it works really well. You push it and it takes you home. That's all you need. Really glad that they added that home button, which the uh, Kindle Fire tablet doesn't have that. And it's annoying. You have to tap the screen to go into a menu to actually get back. You can actually see that's got a really nice uh, raised aspect to it. It is actually a uh, button with the multiple um, uh, bars there sticking out. It's a really nice bit of uh, product engineering that. I really like it. And on the back, the big thing that was missing on the non-touch version, of course, is the audio output. And you can see that there's uh, two uh, speaker vents. They've got uh, dual speakers here. So I guess that that's really uh, quite neat because if you're holding it like that, you don't want to be, uh, if you're blocking uh, one audio port on the bottom, then you've still got the other one over there, whether you're left or right-handed. And the external uh, power pins are the same, so it should uh, be compatible with uh, any uh, cases and things like that. And the only other uh, difference is, of course, a standard 3.5mm uh, Fono headphone jack. Now, they still have the raised uh, power button here. I preferred the uh, slider one uh, on the third generation Kindle, but uh, because if you throw this in your bag or your backpack or something, you can actually um, accidentally hit that. But because the uh, consumption of the e-ink display is essentially uh, pretty, uh, you know, uh, pretty darn low, um, well, 
well, the display itself is zero, so um, unless you've got the Wi-Fi turned on, accidentally turning this thing on in, in your bag isn't the end of the world like it would be with a big uh, power hogging tablet. And we'll give it the old twist test here, and that feels pretty solid. I'm really putting some force into that, and I, I really like it. It feels like, you know, it feels really good uh, quality construction, good quality uh, plastics and materials, and I have no doubt that uh, it'll uh, survive um, very well in so with uh, harsh handling and uh, long use. I'm pretty confident in that. I like it. And of course, this thing is only $99 if you get the ad-supported one. Uh, if you want one without ads, then you've got to pay $139 for exactly the same uh, unit. And what that means is, while you're reading books like this, you don't get any ads, which of course, you know, no one would buy it if you've got ads during the book. That would be far too annoying. But what you get is uh, when you uh, switch it off, let's switch it off here, and... Bang! There we go. You get uh, you get ads, and you can get uh, ads down on your uh, power on screen as well. So when you instead of the uh, nice, you know, you still get some funky images when you turn it off occasionally, but you get these uh, ads down here, and that's what you're paying for. That's their uh, counting on you actually uh, clicking on these ads down here. I'm not going to click it. I'm not give them, going to give them the uh, benefit of that. But it will uh, if you do click it. Uh, presumably, it will uh, shoot you through to their uh, Amazon store or whoever. See, Dove, you know, it's sponsored by Dove. They've paid Amazon, you know, huge millions of dollars, I'm sure, to uh, put their bloody ads on here. But really, it's not a huge uh, deal. I'm pretty happy to have this uh, ad supported one. I don't really care about uh, the stuff down the bottom. Um, you know, as long as it doesn't show up during, when I'm reading a book, that's the main thing. And if you have a look at the main screen between the two here, they have actually uh, changed it on the t uh, on the t uh, touch. This is the when you press the home button. This is what you get, and you get a uh, search, a permanent search bar up there. Menu, of course, the menu button because there's no dedicated menu button like there is on uh, the non-touch uh, unit. And uh, the bar up the top is black. The uh, font is smaller. They've wasted a bit less. Uh, space in terms of the uh, name of the Kindle and things like that and uh, they have actually uh, changed the uh, Wi-Fi the size of the Wi-Fi and the battery the Wi-Fi is uh, smaller I much prefer this one over here which uh, has that incrementing uh, bar graph like that I'm not a big fan of that uh, little radar type uh, radar type display there but uh, as you can see they've got the uh, clock up here which they didn't have on that one on the home screen so there's a few uh, minor differences but I think generally I prefer the uh, interface on the new uh, touch one as opposed to the uh, keyboard based one. One nice touch is when you're in the home screen like this it actually has a back button to take you back to exactly where you were before you actually hit the home button. There it is. And if we actually have a look at the screen here between the two, uh, I expected possibly th there to be some, some reduced um, uh, brightness or contrast uh, on the uh, touch Kindle because it has to have the touch overlay on there, but I think it's actually slightly, oh, I don't know, it depends on the light, I, maybe slightly better. I think uh, even but really uh, there's nothing in it I shouldn't even bother calling that one let's check out the uh, page turning on these in the old in the non-touch you have to of course press the uh, page button and in this one change pages you just uh, tap it so let's do that um, there's not a huge difference in the uh, page turning between them I I'm not really even going to bother to uh, time that but as you can see they're um very Similar. I'm not gonna the text uh, contrast. I'm probably say slightly better on the Kindle. Oh no, I shouldn't say it. I'm gonna call them pretty darn close. Um, anyway, maybe slightly more washed out on this one. Oh, it's not much in it. Anyway, they've changed the uh, the interface down the uh, bottom here. They've got location one here with no bar graph. It just shows a percentage. I didn't really like this tiny little uh, bar graph they had on the non-touch. Uh, version um, so they've changed that I, I think they've changed it for the better anyway so you can um, just uh, touch the screen to change pages or you can swipe of course like that and you can swipe that way to go backwards and one neat thing is you can actually uh, just swipe like this to jump to the next chapter it really is quite neat acknowledgements prologue the beginning 
Bang! I like it. It's beautiful. And it's not obvious how to call up the menu on this. You don't press uh, the button down here because that just takes you back home and you don't press the center or hold it down or something like that because that will uh, um, take you to the next page. So you've actually got to press in this upper region up here and it pops up with the menu. And it's not obvious um, at all, but I guess you only have to learn it once and then you know. And of course you don't instantly get into the menu. It's got the menu button here, you get to the search button, you go shopping, you can go back and you can change the uh, font size and you can jump to pages and you can sync to where you last uh, read it, just like on the other one. So if you want the menu, you've got to call it up here and then you can turn your wireless off and on, shop in the Kindle store, sync, all that sort of stuff, add bookmarks and view notes and all that sort of stuff. And it actually uh, works reasonably well. It, uh, I've had no problems uh, touching it. It's a, there's a little bit of a lag in the response um, of the menu, but uh, apart from, but that's, that's no different to the non-touch one. There's a lag in putting that up and rendering the display and stuff like that, because these are not high-powered devices. They've got ink displays, which aren't very quick. Um, but I find it actually works quite well, and you can shut it down just by touching that, and I haven't had a single missed press yet, I don't think. And I love when you finish a book, you can actually uh, rate it and then you can uh, share it via uh, Twitter or Facebook and uh, it, it sells other books that other people uh, bought and you can recommend those. It's great. And because this Kindle has audio capability, we've got the uh, text to speech. So let's give it a go. Go up to the menu up here and go into the menu. Turn on text to speech. Not all books have text to speech. Uh, some the uh, publisher of the book can we actually each exist for but oh, a short time. Here we go. And in that time, explore but a small part of the whole universe. But humans are a curious species. We wonder. We seek answers. Living in this vast world that is by turns kind and cruel, and gazing at the immense heavens above, people have always asked a multitude of questions. How can we understand the world in which we find ourselves? How does the universe there you go. Behave? And of course you can what choose a male or a female voice. It Where doesn't switch instantly, from? by the way. The you can change the uh, speech rate and you most can pause and you can change the volume. About these questions, but Let's hit that and we can switch it off. So it's not too bad at all. Um, you know, you can. it's very apt that we're choosing a uh, Stephen Hawking book here to, uh, you, to test out a computer voice. But let's give the male one a go and set the speech rate slower or faster. Pretty happy with the default. Hello. Most all of us worry about them some of the time. Traditionally, these are questions for philosophy, but philosophy is dead. Philosophy has not kept up with modern developments in science, particularly physics. Scientists have become the bearers of the torch of discovery in our quest for knowledge. The well, let's do a search on the book and it pops up the keyboard. Let's take our first look at the keyboard here and as you can see it's uh, they've actually got like a big uh, inverse. They've got a black um, uh, background with white keys and it actually works uh, surprisingly well. I'm quite happy with it and uh, it might look like um, it, it takes a bit of time to respond but there's no lag in it at all. It actually keeps up with uh, my one finger typing. No problems at all. For example, if you hit the back key and you watch the uh, characters up here, it uh, it responds pretty much instantly to my individual. There's a little bit of a buffer there, but it doesn't miss any keys. The keyboard works quite well. I'm pretty happy with that. And as for the Wi-Fi, at marginal reception, it seems to work very well indeed, as opposed to the new Kindle Fire, which was absolutely atrocious. I've got it in exactly the same uh, position out here on my bench on the wooden desktop, right at the um, extreme end of, end of my Wi-Fi range. I've, uh, practice, I don't need like a single bar up there for the Wi-Fi, and, uh, and it works. It actually works uh, quite well. I like it. And if we go into... Uh, shop in here we can go into the uh, kindle store we can go into books let's go into say non-fiction it's you know it's it's pretty darn quick i like it i'm pretty impressed with this and if you're worried about ghosting on the screen well i'm having a hard time uh, finding any really it's uh it's you know we've got the black there and it popped up and i can't really see any ghosting i've caught a, like a real tiny hint of it but it's pretty darn good and let's try an audio book i've downloaded a uh, sample of carl sagan's contact i haven't tried it yet so here we go let's go in there and see what it's like 
and it comes up you can adjust the volume you can uh, it looks like you can skip about uh, 30 seconds ahead 30 seconds back uh, probably go to the next chapter go back things like that well let's just play and uh, this is audible from Simon and Schuster audio let's skip Contact. ahead gliding in polar orbit about the great blue white star When they pulled her out, his friends expressed surprise that the baby was so polite. It's not polite. Excellent. Sir, no problem. I like it. I said to her. It is, though, a bit of a shame that uh, it doesn't have an external audio uh, control uh, somewhere around on the outside that you've got to use uh, on screen. But, yeah, not a huge deal. And while reading a book, you can do the uh, sliding pinch thing and go up and down like that. So that's rather quite neat. Works well. There's one thing that's curiously missing though. We had the screen rotation in the uh, non-touch version, but in the touch version, I'm buggered if I can find it. I don't think it actually allows you to rotate the screen upside down or anything like that. You, I think you just fixed to one portrait. I could be wrong, but I haven't found it yet. Might have to read the manual. And let's have a look what they've got in the experimental uh, menu. Is the uh, web browser still in there? And yep, it is. They've got a web browser, an MP3 player, and uh, text-to-speech as well. So let's go into the web browser and uh, see how that works. Google, bang! It popped up straight away, even with that marginal Wi-Fi connection. I like it. Can we pinch and zoom? Yeah, we can. We can indeed. Move around? Yep. Let's go to uh, eevblog.com, shall we? Blog, and it's got the .com there. That's excellent. And go. Oh, that's pretty quick for this marginal connection. That's as quick as my uh, notebook. And once again, because it's the e-ink display, it's you know it's not very good at uh, browsing and doing refreshing and stuff like that. It's not very quick. But that's uh, rendered that. No problems at all. Excellent. And of course, it's got no flash player built in, so you obviously can't watch embedded YouTube videos and stuff like that. But that's not what, that's not what uh, these Kindles are designed for. Pinch and zoom in there. Go up. Jeez, that's, that's pretty darn good and pretty quick for a Kindle. Let's go up to menu and see what we can do here. We can, uh, looks like, uh, bookmark this page, browser settings, stuff like that. Probably a bare bones, yeah, clear cookies, JavaScript, disable images, that sort of stuff. Curious to know what this article mode here is. I'm not sure. Hey, there we go. Intended for use on individual article pages and not home pages. You still want to turn on article mode? Click here. Oh, yeah, why not? There we go. And it's, uh, it looks like it's just popped up some, uh, some of my uh, sidebar um, text here. <laughs> go figure. And it claims to have an MP3 player. No MP3 files found. Oh, we'll have to upload some later and give that a try. And I've gone and done just that. I uploaded an album, uh, hooked it up to the PC. It just appears as a drive. I won't bother showing you. It's exactly like the other Kindles. And uh, you drag uh, the MP3 files over to the audio, uh, well, over to the music subdirectory. And let's have a look. Bang, there it is. Weird Al Yankovic's white and nerdy beauty. And uh, we can select our track. Yeah, well, let's do white and nerdy. Happy with that. <laughs> Works well. Beautiful. And let's try and switch it off. Yep, no problem. Switch it off. Still goes. And you do get a decent increase in the volume when you put it down too. Listen to this. Just adds a bit of uh, bass there off the off the uh, bench, and it comes with a document which tells you what uh, new features are in this uh, new Kindle: smoother page turning, easy reach, exclusive new uh, touch that lets you easily uh, read with one hand. Um, X-ray. This sounds interesting. A reference tool: uh, single tap X-ray scans your entire book for characters, historical figures, and interesting terms, and provides detailed descriptions. Fantastic! Well, I've gone into the Kindle's bestseller list, and uh, let's download a um, 
Steve Jobs' new exclusive uh, autobiography. We'll try a sample of that uh, and see if it's got the um, uh, X-ray uh, capability because none of the books I seem to have on here um, have this X-ray capability. Wow, I just pressed stop on the camera and that's already downloaded. That is very, very quick. I'm so impressed with the speed of this thing, even with marginal reception. There we go, the exclusive biography. Let's see if it's got this uh, X-ray capability. It's supposed to be when you call up the menu... Um, it's supposed to have something down the bottom which tells you it's got um, x-ray, but there's nothing there. So, can we read a book single-handedly, right or left hand, and navigate navigate uh, back and forth? Well, as you know, we just uh, click anywhere in the center there to go to the next page, but if we, on the left-hand side, if we click back here, we go back a page. Now, if we do that on the uh, right-hand side here, if we click here, we actually go forward. So, you can't click on the edge and go back, but you can swipe it like that, no problems. Excellent, so yeah, you can actually hold this thing in one hand and use it. I actually prefer it to the uh, Kindle's uh, side buttons like this. I, The touch just, I, I don't know, I just much prefer it. It's, a, it's just a better capability, I think, and it's more versatile, of course. So what about the dictionary capability that was so easy on the previous Kindle? Well, I think we just touch a word Let's try wedlock, hold it down, and bang, there it is, the new Oxford American Dictionary. You can change your uh, type of dictionary you got in there, and you can go into show full definition, if you're that keen. And bang, there it is. Nice, it works well. And the highlight function, let's give that a try. If we want to highlight this paragraph here, or this sentence, or something like that, we can just, let's say we want to highlight that sentence there. And bang, highlight, add note, or we can share it. We can actually uh, tweet that, presumably, with our social link to the passage will be included with your message. And you can share it with the uh, social media that you've set up. Fantastic. I'm going to actually tweet this to my uh, several thousand Twitter followers just as a test. I've got to, I've got to see that it actually works. Share, message, shared. I presume, I believe I've already linked my uh, Twitter in there. I'll go check my Twitter account and see if it's uh, popped up. And it sure has. It works. Test quote from my Kindle Touch. There it is. And it's already hashtagged uh, Kindle and it's uh, linked to uh, Amazon, presumably, to the book. No, I highlight a note by David L. Jones. We seem to be at a critical point. Yada, yada, yada. Test quote from my Kindle Touch. There you go. And it tells me the book, and uh, you can read, and it automatically links to the, it shows the page, and automatically links to the free chapter. I love it. <laughs> Works brilliantly. And once the battery's depleted, you can't miss it. Check out the big battery symbol with the uh, bar graph, and it's uh, charging now. But uh, unfortunately, when you uh, hook it up, it, uh, if you hook it up to a PC to actually charge it, it doesn't let you uh, actually connect to the PC and charge it from completely dead like that. It looks like you've got to actually wait until it gets some decent charge in it before it will actually connect to the computer. Don't really like that. And one of the big questions with the ebook readers, everyone wants to know is, uh, can they read PDFs? Is it any good? Because the keyboard-based ones are just hopeless because you don't have the ability to just uh, drag around, you know, use a sort of a touchscreen interface and, and, uh, and expand and stuff like that. And because it's only a six inch, you can't read um, it's a full page PDFs, which might typically be uh, A4 uh, formatted, even A5 formatted ones have a have a little bit of trouble uh, fitting on these six inch screens so I just uh, copied over um, hooked it up the PC copied over a couple of uh, PDFs here uh, to I made a separate subdirectory called uh, data sheets and it just uh, popped up straight on my home screen here so let's give it a go I haven't tried it yet let's go in and read this one this is about an 850 page bang there we go hey I recognize that dude and uh, let's Try and, okay, because the, okay, the font, let's try and read that, okay? You can, you can read it, but, you know, that's not something you really want to be reading on an ebook. So, you want to expand it, let's try that, yep, well, yeah, there we go, it uh, expanded a bit too much there, alright, that's not bad. The images show up nicely, takes a little bit to refresh it, but uh, you can... Scroll around, 
no problems at all. It's a bit slow, of course, because these things aren't optimised for this sort of stuff. And uh, let's try the page turn. No? If you zoomed in, it looks like the page turn doesn't work. The page turn will only work if you're like that. And it automatically resets, so the zoom has just reset itself. So, expand that out a bit. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit too much. It's a little bit tricky there to sort of get the hang of that. Let's see if we can touch the side here, like this. And no, we can't go to the next page just by touching the side. That's a bit of an oversight. Not too happy with that, but you can actually uh, read these things. No problem. It's much, much better than the uh, than the keyboard based Kindles. And here's a data sheet. Let's go in there and look at some tables. Yeah, it's it's a bit touchy, but certainly readable. So you can use these things as ebook readers. Let's go up and have a look at the menu. Tap to search. Okay, can we actually search? Let's f search for 10 milliamps there. I just saw that on the screen. And go. Will it actually find it? Yep, it found it. There it is. Bang. So you can search PDFs. Awesome. There it is. Let's just see if we can zoom in on a graph. Say we want that one there. Bang. No problem. So the 6 inch screen still isn't... Uh, you know, ideal for viewing PDFs and the response time and stuff is a bit slow, uh, you know, you're better off with like a proper 9-inch um, uh, tablet or something like that, or even a 9-inch uh, ebook uh, reader, but it's, you know, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't complain if, uh, you know, I, I didn't have to search them all day, you just have to search them occasionally and you can keep your data sheets in there. It's great. Works pretty well, I think. And with PDFs like this, I think the ability, or lack of ability, to be able to rotate it like that and actually uh, view a page width like that is, you know, a pretty big oversight, I think. So, you know, ah, oh, jeez, I wish it had that rotation capability. I wish it had auto-rotation. That'd be great for viewing PDFs like this. And if you want to delete a document off your Kindle, just hold down there like that and it pops up and you can delete, you can view notes and marks, you can search it or you can add to various collections which I won't go into but let's delete it and uh, you bet we want to delete it and bingo we've just freed up some space on our Kindle. And one of the great things about the screen on this is that it really effectively leaves little or no uh, finger smudge marks so you really shouldn't have to clean it. I mean I've, I can, I'm really struggling to find, you know, I can just see a couple of um, smudge marks in there and, you know, if you compare it to, say, the Kindle Fire, which is, you know, two seconds after using the thing, it's just, the screen is just covered in finger smudge marks. You don't get that on the Kindle Touch. It's great. So the verdict? Well, in short, I think it's the best Kindle yet. And I love it. It's my preferred Kindle. I, I prefer it over the keyboard one. I know some people don't. They still prefer the keyboard base one, and I can see a couple of reasons why, you know, if you accidentally touch the screen, you know, if you handle it and stuff like that, then it might be a little bit annoying, but I, I just prefer the user interface. The touch screen, I think it works really well. Viewing PDFs has been fixed, you can finally do that, it's great. Real annoying thing, lack of rotation capability. I love reading books like this, but if I'm viewing documents, I might prefer it like that don't understand why they've limited it like that. It's just a software limitation. They had done the previous one. Why they've killed it, I've got no idea. Lack of volume control. This is a great audio Kindle. It works quite well. It's very basic, of course, but they've done away with the dedicated audio controls that they had on the third generation Kindle. Once again, you know, a bit of cost cutting. Why have they done it? It's just annoying. So, and I preferred the slide switch um, on the third generation Kindle, but those three things are probably the only thing I can find wrong with it. It's got a no lot of nice new touches I really like. So I reckon it's probably my pick for the ebook readers. It's certainly, I can't beat a Kindle. It does the job and it does it well. Battery life is on par with the third generation Kindle. I haven't actually uh, done performance measurements to check that. Uh, that takes time. Haven't done it yet, but by all indications, it's just as good as the other one. The ads. 
I don't mind it, you want to save some cash? Get the ad-based one. It doesn't pop up when you're reading books, which is the main thing. Now, I've been reading this at night for uh, last three or four nights, and every night it pops up, and it says, first thing I do, turn it on, and it says, your battery is flat, please charge it. Urgh, annoying, but I know it's a Kindle. It doesn't choose hardly anything when you're actually viewing, because the screen itself draws no power, and it's great. So it not only survived that first night, but the second, oh yeah, I charge it in the morning. Yeah, right, never got around to it. Second night, same error and a message pops up and it still lets me read and view and you know occasionally pops up your battery is completely flat well it still works that's what i love about these kindles they're fantastic they just keep on working it doesn't just suddenly die on you and you're left in the lurch and you can't read your damn book so these are fantastic i highly recommend them one other thing that's missing of course is it'd be awesome if it had an external micro sd card doesn't cost them any, yeah, it costs them hardly anything to put that in, and it'd be brilliant. It'd be the biggest, you know, so if it had those things, if it had auto rotation, if it had the uh, SD card, if it had the external volume controls, and, uh, uh, you know, it'd be probably the best ebook reader on the market. I think it still is, but it'd be by a country mile. So don't walk, run. Get yourself a Kindle if you don't have one. I love it.